Hey everyone, uh, welcome to day three of uh, April's Testimony Challenge. Uh, it's going so well. We, we have had a tremendous amount of response already of people writing in, sharing testimonies, sharing prayer requests, uh, whether privately or even on the comments. Um, it's just, uh, it's just been exactly what we were wanting and, uh, and why, why we're doing it. We did it last year and we had a great response when, when we did it in March. And here we are in April and, uh, and it's going well. And so I just want to encourage you to continue to write in testimonies because uh, as we've said, I think the first two days, uh, at the end of the month, probably the last week, we're gonna have a day where we may read the testimonies that all of you have written in of how God uh, has moved in your life in, in different ways. Uh, and so today, as you can see, we have someone with us uh, that you may not have ever seen. Uh, some of you may that are watching it, but it's our amazing friend, Rose Daniel. So this is a, uh, a testimony about restoration of relationships. It's an amazing testimony. Uh, I'm gonna interview Rose here, and, uh, and we're just gonna talk about how God uh, supernaturally restored her relationship with her father. And, and then at the end, we're gonna have a time of prayer because I'm, I'm telling you now that God wants to restore relationships. Uh, he, is, he is very much in that business and he wants to do it in a supernatural way. Uh, so we're just gonna kind of back up. And so, uh, so we do know that uh, really your history of how you grew up, if we're gonna back up, let's back up 20 years mm -hmm. and just kind of tell me a little bit about the household you grew up in. Okay. So I grew up in Michigan and I uh, have seven siblings. We lived in Detroit too, also. Um, so seven siblings, four girls, four boys, and my parents were there. We right. always had our parents. And um, we grew up in a Polish Catholic neighborhood where everybody knew everybody. Everybody was friends, everybody right. hung out on, on the porch. And, and um, we just, I mean, yeah. it, it was rough. Kind of, was know. it like, was it a big house, small no, house? No, it was about 800 square feet. Very Seven small. Seven siblings. Very small. And we had like the four girls were crammed in one bedroom. The wow. four boys were crammed in one bedroom. Um, until, you know, kids grew up and left the house. Right. Then we, you know, got it a little bit better. But, um, yeah, it was a loud, a lot of fighting sure. in our house. Yeah. So where are you and the siblings? Are you I'm oldest, the, youngest, I'm, I'm the youngest girl. Okay. So my mom had a baby almost every year. Right. And then she had me, and then there was a four year gap, and then she had my youngest brother, Dennis. Gotcha. So, that, you know, I was the baby for four years by myself, you know, and then here right. comes a baby, and it's like, who's Rose? Yeah. You know? So I had to deal with that too, I right. think. I, you sure. know, just subconsciously. I mean, I didn't know what I was dealing with. Right. So, um, so yeah, mostly Catholic school, mm -hmm. public school for a few years, but then we went back. Me and two, two of my brothers went to get right. at high school, Catholic high school. Well, then t tell me a little bit, because uh, uh, I want to ask some questions about the Catholic school and, and that upbringing. Uh, but, uh, so tell me about the household. So crammed household, a lot of people, and uh, what was the temperature of the house, for lack of a better. It was loud, always, yeah. always. I mean, when there was hardly ever nobody not home, you know what I mean? There was right. always people and it was always very loud. If we weren't talking loud or my mom was getting after us or, you know, she'd say all of our names before she'd get the right name. Right. You know, it was just chaos a lot of the time. Sure. Um, and where was your dad? He, he worked nights, but he was home on the weekend. Okay. And so, um, but we went through a time where he was like a weekend alcoholic, mm -hmm. where he just would come home from work on Friday, stay downstairs drinking until Sunday, he had to eat dinner and go to work at nine o'clock okay. at night. So he, he did that. And so we were, and you know, like today, people really are in touch with their kids. They right. know how to get in touch with them. You know, with us, we just would um, go outside, as long as we were back in the house by street lights, right? They didn't know where we were or sure. what we were doing. We had no supervision. Wow. Not saying nothing bad about my parents, right? But that's just the way the whole generation was. Right. You know, we just, and it was, you know, I hated that too. Yeah. You know, because you, 
when you're getting away with everything, it's fun, but then you, there's consequences at the end of stuff all the time. Sure. And so, uh, so it was loud in the house and, and, uh, you mentioned to me before, but it also felt kind of like a violent house. So explain yeah. what you mean by violent. I, we physically fought me and one of my sisters, we fought almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. We shared a room when, yeah. when the four of us got broken up, the two twins, I had twin sisters, they had a room and then me and my sister, Mary mm -hmm. had a room and it was just hurting people, hurting people. Sure. I mean, that's what it was, Yeah. you know? And I didn't know that at the time, right. I was just surviving. Right. You know, we were just trying to get through. Right. You know. And then how did your dad discipline? How did he discipline? Yeah. Um, when he did, it would be pretty rough. Right. On whoever got it. Sure. You know, um, I didn't get hit because mm -hmm. I learned really quick how not to get hit sure. and I always would agree with everything my dad said yeah so I you know I didn't so um but the ones that did it was it was pretty right. rough so, so it then, wasn't often but when it was it was pretty rough. yeah so so tell me about so you grew up in Catholic school and I know that that kind of formed uh for a while your view of God mm -hmm. and and also uh, and how that correlates with your dad, which we're going to get into, but just kind of start off about, about that. And, and, uh, now that we kind of have a history of what the household was like, why don't you also just start with what started this journey of restoration? And so I know we're going to go back to Catholic school, but you actually were attending the church where you started a study mm -hmm. and that study is kind of what brought you back to that upbringing. Yeah. So I started reading a book called Search for Significance. And when I started looking through it and it talks about believing lies and you know, right. all these things as you grow up. And so I um, started you know, thinking about stuff just started coming up in my emotions. Right. And a lot of it, when I would think of what it, the causes were, it, was, it had to do with my, my relationship with my dad. And so um, I just felt like, you know, having grown up Catholic, I always thought, you know, God wasn't interested in me unless I sinned. Not sure. that I was sinning to get his attention, right. but he only thought about me when I sinned. Right. And so then I'd have to go to confession so I could have communion on Sunday. Right. And so I would go to confession um, cause you know, my mom made us all go on Saturday so we could go to church Sunday cause that was the rule. Right. And so, um, and I fit, confession is great. I mean, for you, you know, to confess, you feel better. So I would feel really good and feel all light inside right. and everything. And, you know, I knew it would last till I got home though. Sure. You know, and I, we lived like a couple blocks, so it was only that. And then, you know, there'd be something would happen at home and it would be on again. Right. So, um, but you know, we went to church every Sunday with my mom, all eight of us. And she made, we all took up a pew, you know, just for our whole family. Everybody knew the Sullivans were coming, right. you know, so, um, but it was, you know, just the rules of the Catholic church, sure. you know, and I wanted to follow the rules. Right. And so I never, you know, the thing that I really appreciated about the Catholic part was, you know, my mom made us go to church. Sure. So I had that in, in me to go every Sunday, right. you know, um, and to do all the everything. So you have this upbringing, you, you know, you, you kind of have a history of, of your view of God and just kind of obeying the rules, you know, staying in line, confessing, uh, uh, and then, um, years later you have an encounter with, with God and so you are reading this book, Search for Significance, where it's more in the realm of relationship with mm -hmm. God and having a relationship with God. Um, and so that sparked you kind of dealing with your view of God being a little bit more harsh. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, so why don't you go from there and just kind of share, you know, what led to, uh, to your view of God and then realizing you needed to talk to your dad. Well, because for, not only did I think of God like that my dad 
You know, I thought of God like my dad. I mostly thought about him as the priest. Right. You know, um, because the priest was, in our mind, from in the Catholic mindset, um, you know, you had to go to the priest to confess. Right. And that, so to me, he was like my lifeline to God. Sure. So I didn't view my, I didn't view God so much like my dad in, in the harsh way. I viewed God more like with a gavel, sure. you know, the minute you sin, that's it. Yeah. But with, you know, like I said, with my dad, I learned not to get in trouble. So, I mean, I did things to get in trouble, right. but he just didn't know about it. But, um, he, I don't know. I didn't, I, just that God wasn't affectionate. Sure. That he didn't show affection. Right. That he was all business. Right. Um, that he provided for mm -hmm. us, you know. So I learned the provision side of God sure. in that way. Um, but, so as I was doing the, reading the book and going through it and, you know, God, I was opening myself up more to God to speak to me. Right. And so I thought, hmm, you know, I need to get, I need to get rid of this, these emotions. Right. You know. And so I thought I talked to my brother Mike, mm -hmm. and he was in California, and he's been my him and Marianne, his wife, have been my spiritual advisors my whole Christian right. life. So, um, you know, I always talk to him and her about everything. So I went and asked him if he would come with me to go talk to my dad. And so I wrote the letter, you know, and I. It took me a while to write it because right. I kept, no, I can't say that. I can't say that. And so I just wanted to make it direct and to the right. point. So you're writing, you're writing a letter to your dad, um, mainly because you had an encounter with God as father, um, that started reshaping your view of God. Mm -hmm. And in that relationship, so your new relationship with God, where he's not harsh, he doesn't have the gavel. He spoke, what did you feel like you needed to put in the letter? Um, and because I'm not sure if I asked this and why did you write a letter? Let's start there. Why did you feel like you wanted to write a letter to your dad? Well, I wrote the letter because I felt like if I just, because I tried talking to him before mm -hmm. and apologizing for something and he's, uh, he's, oh, I didn't, it's no big deal. And it, it was. Right. So I thought talking to him is not going to work. Right. So I thought if I put my thoughts down on paper and explain it and keep it on point, not make it too long where he'd lose interest and even, you know what I mean? Right. So I um, wrote it direct and to the point. Right. So it was like one page, front and back maybe. Right. And I put down all the things that came to mind that hurt me mm -hmm. and that I just wanted him to know. I wasn't trying to do it to be mean to him right. or anything like that. I just wanted him to know. Right. And I didn't know what to expect or anything so right. I had my brother Mike come with me and he kind of was the mediator mm -hmm. person he and kept, Mike is a believer yes okay. so he agreed to come and me and Mike went over there to my mom and dad's and it was just the four of us so I, we got there and I, he knew I was coming to talk to him and then I handed him the letter and I said we I said, we'll talk after you finish reading it. And so he re he was reading it. And as he was reading it, he kept stopping mm -hmm. on every point. And then he'd look at my brother, Mike, and say something to him. And like, I didn't know, or whatever. Right. And, and Mike would say, Dad, we're here for her. Yeah. And so he kept him looking at me when right. he spoke. So he, fi he finished the letter, and he started to... Um, like make excuses mm -hmm. and you know just it wasn't going well right you know he was trying to shove the piece of paper down the side of the couch I mean it was like he did not want that paper anywhere near him right and and so um so we were going back and forth and it got to where I just stopped and I looked at um any Catholic would know the sacred heart of Jesus picture right above the tv set so I looked at that picture above their TV set and I, I said to myself or to the Lord, I said, you know what? I'm, I said, Lord, I'm out of here. This, you know, I'm going. 
And I heard the Lord in my mind say, just wait. Yeah. And so I, I sat there for a second. And then the very next thing that came out of my mouth, I just looked at my dad and I said, dad, I said, my entire life, I never believed one day that you ever loved me. Wow. And he said, I mean, it kind of, you know, he just sat there for a second and then he started to cry. And then he got up and he walked over to me and told me to stand up and he hugged, you know, started hug, really hugging me. Wow. And, you know, crying and, and I kind of didn't know what to do, you know, cause I, it was so, I'm, you know, I wanted that my whole life. Right. And then when it happened, it was so unfamiliar to sure. me, you know? And so the first thing I thought of was, man, is he short? <laughs> because I never was that close to him, right. you know? And, and so um, the other thing I thought was he didn't, you know, when you hug people and they squish a little, mm -hmm. he didn't because right. he was so muscles right and he didn't his body didn't move but anyway that he just kept and they had just gotten computers back then mm -hmm. and so my dad was saying just delete it from your mind delete yeah. it you know and like so for me he I don't exactly know the exact words he said to say he was sorry but I knew he was sorry yeah because the reaction sure. nobody ever seen him cry right and to humble himself in that sure. way um, to do that. So I just felt like when I left, you know, after, I just felt like, you know, God did that for me. Sure. He let all that happen for me. The relationship didn't necessarily change. Um, I didn't, cause I didn't live at home either. So right. I didn't spend a lot of time with him. It was usually on the phone. He'd never wanted to talk short, you know, and so I felt like he still don't love me, you know, right. you know, but I felt like, um, you know, coming away from that, I felt like he did the best he could sure. knowing what he had. His parents never told him they loved him. Um, and he, you know, and I feel like the main thing for this too is encouraging people in a sense of fi finishing well yeah you know instead of even if you start off bad right. finishing well you can it's like <clears throat> to me for salvation you know like everything here back <coughs> you know right. um like in an instant things can change and the whole past of everything as long as you bring out your hurt and you get yeah. at least confront it and even if the person doesn't respond the way yeah. you think, you know, God just does it to help us be healed. Sure. You know? So I feel like that for me, I'm thankful that, cause my dad, he passed away last year. Mm -hmm. So, um, but he was so happy and so, you know, he, after that time, he started telling all of us, I love yeah. you, I love your kids, I love, tell right. so and so I said hi, and you know, he acted very interested in all, yeah. you know, not just me, but all my siblings. And, you know, he just, I think everybody, everybody was good right. when he passed away. There was no ill feelings, no anything, you know, he just loved us yeah. and we knew it, you know, so. It's such an amazing story. Um, of redemption. I love, uh, I, not that I love that he didn't respond well at first, but it's that, uh, it's that the Lord telling you to wait and really, you know, not even wait in silence, but then it is like the Holy Spirit gave you the exact words that, that was needed. It was like your, your paper, which was really sharing with him, this is how you've affected my life. But really, it all came down wrapping around one truth. Yeah. And that is, I never felt that you love me. And that it's true in the word that truth is what sets us free if we're willing to accept it. And something happened in his heart when he actually heard not just your heart, but truth, which is, I never felt like you love me. And the breaking point came of him realizing I did that, mm -hmm. you know, and uh and then just his response uh, is absolutely incredible. And, and Rose and I were, uh, were talking and kind of halfway joking is that, that we do want the testimony released for reconciliation, but 
uh, but we are laughing that we may need to do a disclaimer that results may vary in the sense that that Rose went in not expecting it necessarily anything back from her dad, but it was more for her. Like this is her way of getting her out was being able to actually share, this is how you've affected my life and doing it in love. You know, uh, I know Rose enough that she didn't go with a hammer and just, <laughs> you know, this is my chance dad to give it back to you. But it was out of love of just sharing that, hey, this is, this is how you have affected my life. And that grace in the room which allowed reconciliation to happen. And our hope is that whether it's with a parent or a relationship or whatever, is that today that a grace is released for reconciliation to happen in relationships. Um, and whether that is that God tells you like Rose, like, hey, write a letter and go. Um, for some, uh, your, pa your parent may not be alive right now, but still, I mean, you can still write a letter. And just to be able, the, the goal is to get out the hurt of, of what's going on. And, and however the Lord leads you in that, we, we want to pray here at the end that a grace is released. And probably I'm going to have Rose pray for you. Um, uh, just out of that testimony, that, uh, that reconciliation happens. And, um, and listen, not, not just here, but there have been other testimonies that, that I know Joanna and I have heard through the years is when a testimony of reconciliation happens, that it almost starts a domino effect of relationships starting to be restored. And so I just want to encourage you that, like, I do want to say, you'll know this is for you if you're hearing this, and then all that anxiety comes up of like, oh, I'm supposed to do something, because it's scary. And I imagine you going wasn't necessarily like, oh, I'm just gonna go talk to my dad yeah mm -hmm. I, i'm sure there was well you your brother lived where california <laughs> he had he, to come to help <laughs> and he flew in the help yeah. because there was anxiety yeah. with actually doing it yeah. but it was the obedience to the lord that brought restoration and so why don't i mean i don't know anything else you want to share but then why don't you pray for everyone just that whatever's on your heart for them okay the one thing i do last thing to share is you know, when, when the Lord tells you, just wait. I mean, it was very, I could have got up and left. Right. You know, but the, every time that he has said that to me throughout my Christian walk is something miraculous happens right, right. behind it, you know? Yeah. And it, it was just, just wait. So we have a choice to do that or not to do that. Right. And I just encourage people, if you hear God say, just wait, just wait. Yeah, Because right. it's coming. That's right. Well, why don't you pray for us? Okay, Lord, I just come to you and I just ask, Lord, that um, for your grace and your mercy that it would fall on people. Lord, that, that you would talk to people, to their hearts, Lord, for people who need to, to go through this process with someone. And I just pray, God, that you would um, just prepare their hearts, prepare just that they would go without expectation, just knowing that they just need to be free and just let this stuff go so that they can move on. And and I do pray for the, I mean, that was just the added bonus, what my dad did, and it freed him. So yeah. Lord, I just thank you for that. And I thank you for um, anybody else that needs this to happen, that, that it will happen, that you'll give them the courage to do it and that you'll show them the exact way to do it. And we just give you all the glory and thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, so if you're listening to this and just something registered with you, we just I just want to encourage you to uh, listen to the Holy Spirit and, uh, and just that our belief is that he is the God of reconciliation and that he can, he can, settle our hearts when there seems to be issues in the realm of relationships and uh and so we just want again want that released to you in jesus name um uh, for that i do want to give a couple of resources one i haven't read it but rose did and it did a lot for her it's called the search for significance uh that might help you 
The other one, especially in the realm of forgiveness, I cannot recommend it enough. It's a book called The Supernatural Power of Forgiveness by Jason Ballatin. Fantastic book. I mean, if you're, even before, like, maybe you're like, I want to go confront, but if I do it, I'm going to kill them. Then that probably means there's a, a forgiveness issue. And, and being able to walk through that first is really important. And I would recommend that book if you, if you haven't read it on helping you walk through forgiveness so that you can actually go with grace and, uh, and re help restore relationships. So uh, other than that, we will be back tomorrow for day four of the Testimony Challenge. I look forward to hearing anything. If you need prayer, if something happened with this and you just want us to partner with you in prayer for a relationship that needs restoring, anything in that world, we, we want to partner with you and we love to hear testimonies, uh, especially in this subject. So if you have a relationship that's either been restored or through this testimony was restored, we want to hear about it. And uh, we love you so much and we'll see you tomorrow.